Okay, it's here. I think the first Rally Raid CB500X Adventure Kit to be production to be delivered in the United States. Got it through Olaf there at Giant Loop. Thanks Olaf for getting that together so quick and getting it down here so quickly. It's been a really extraordinary journey watching the development of this entire project and I'm really excited to be a part of one of the first bike buildups. So today I want to take the opportunity to um, show you what exactly comes in the stage three kit for the CB500X. Talk a little bit about the other two stages, what's included in those kits. Take a good look at the fit and finish of each of the parts and maybe discuss some of the frequently asked questions on the forum about this build. And then we'll do a separate video of the actual build itself. Okay, box one, a front wheel. Great job packing. Box two, rear wheel. All right. And box number three, everything else, suspension, kickstand, and all the rest. Let's take a closer look and see what's in here. pieces. Yeah, what we got here? Like that. Oh, that Pete. Pete, what's this? Big time, huh? Okay, here it all is, laid out on the table. We'll go and look at each item and discuss uh, why it's in the kit and its form and function and take a good look at the uh, quality of each component. So what's the overall purpose here? What are we trying to do here? We're building up a, the first mid-size adventure bike that is sorely needed in the US market, a serious niche market. Rally Raid's taken it on and done a great job of providing this kit, the kit to build the bike that Honda should have made in the first place. So what do we need to do? We need to get some suspension underneath this thing. And Rally Raid has provided it with this kit here. Armor it up with a few other hard bits and pieces and it's gonna be a real interesting adventure bike. So by using as much as the OEM parts as possible, Rally Raid has come up with this level three kit. So let's start with the wheels first. We're gonna remove both of these cast wheels and change this 17 inch front wheel out to a 19 inch spoked front wheel. We're gonna retain the 17 inch diameter on the rear with a 17 inch spoked wheel. The spoked wheels are powder coated aluminum rims and heavy duty stainless steel spokes. And then this is the neat kind of work that Rally Raid does billet powder coated machined parts that allow you to bolt the OEM parts directly on to what uh, Rally Raid has provided here. Bushings and uh, bearings are all included in the wheels. Here's the cush drive. You can take the stock cush drive right off of the bike and drop it into here. Bearings and wheels, or correction, bearings included. Nice big fat rims. Now, the tires are not included in this kit, so what's recommended are these guys, the Continental TKC80 tires. The rear is a uh, 170 by 70, 17 inch rear, tubeless. Don't worry about that, it's a tubeless tire. And the front is and the front is a 110 by 80, 19 inch front. TKC Continental 80, dual sport DOT approved tire. Now these are tubeless tires going on a spoked rim. So we're gonna put heavy duty inner tubes 
inside of these tubeless tires and run them on these spoked rims. That's not going to be a problem. It'll add a little bit of weight. But if you're on the trail and you rip open a tire, you're going to want a tubed tire anyways to repair it. Which brings up the point of the center stand. We, yes, we had to lose the center stand to put the engine plate on. But uh, with a trail stand, which I have yet to obtain, we should be able to um, pick up the bike on the road and change a wheel. And of course, the main advantage of the spoked wheels over the cast wheels is they are much more rugged design off-road. In order to accommodate the larger 19-inch front wheel, you get a new front fender that matches the contour of the new wheel and some new taller adapter plates to adapt the new fender to the existing fork stanchions. Another note on the wheels, this is a non-ABS model Honda. That's my preference off-road. The ABS models work just fine. You bring the ring with you onto the new rims and continue on with ABS brakes on your converted bike. My choice of non-ABS may be out of ignorance or old school <laughs> dirt biking. My only experience with ABS off-road is early model ABS systems and, and uh, with the early model systems, we always just turned them off anytime we went off road. So that's why I chose to find this 2013 non ABS model. However, I'm getting reports that the new ABS on these bikes is considerably different and better than old ABS versions and may very well be suitable just fine off road. Plus, there are links out there uh, to disable ABS system if you need to on the CB500X. In order to greatly improve the suspension of the CB500X, Rally Raid has done that by completely changing out the rear shock with this tractive, much longer shock, and by changing the internals to the stock existing fork tubes and stanchions. Let's talk a little more about this shock. By the time we get done with the suspension on this, it's going to raise the entire bike up about two inches and give you about mm, seven or seven and a half inches of suspension travel about similar to i think it's the uh, bmw f800 or f700 gs bike this bike i have had lowered about an inch so it represents about nine inches of travel still a very tall bike and this this the um ktm 350 EXCF represents about 12 inches of travel just an unbelievable amount of good travel but it makes for a very tall bike. The tractive shock made in uh, the Netherlands is an additional almost two inches longer than the stock unit. And <laughs> wait till you see the stock shock that comes off of this bike. This shock features adjustable preload right here, a remote reservoir for additional capacity, but because the shock is so nearly hard to get to the top of it, this remote reservoir also allows you to access the what we call the clickers of the um, compression dampening both high speed and low speed compression dampening adjustability right here on this uh, remote reservoir we'll show you where that's going to mount in a minute on the bottom of the shock right here is your rebound clicker the remote shock is going to be fished through here and mounted right there off of the water pump on this rally raid plate and there's the hardware for that allowing easy access to the compression dampening high speed and low beat speed clickers. There are two things to uh, consider when you're buying the level three kit. First, how big are you? <laughs> so which spring do you want to buy? Comes in uh, three spring weights, light, medium, and heavy duty. So you want to get the correct spring rate for your weight. I got the medium duty. I hope I don't overwhelm it <laughs> with my fat arse. The other thing to consider is which handlebars are you going to run? Are you going to run these stock handlebars with the smaller diameter, or are you going to run some fat bars with the larger diameter handlebars? So that'll come into play when you order up your triple clamp. I've got the stock bars here. I've got my stock handlebars set up the way I like them. I like the way the stock handlebars are configured, the right height length width plus i got all this stuff on here i don't want to go and redo it all over for a set of fat bars just yet 
So two things to consider when you order the level three kit, your weight, get the correct spring for the rear shock and which handlebars you're running. Here's the new rally raid plates that'll complete the rear shock linkage for the new rear shock assembly marked left and right. Okay, here's the front suspension components. <clears throat> if you're like me, uh, you haven't been inside a set of forks in a long, long time. Well, we're going to work through this together and figure this out. I'm going to use the rally raid philosophy that uh, you can do this entire job with just hand tools. And we're going to do it right here in the backyard with just hand tools. Now, these forks are a pretty simple assembly on the inside. They're a pretty old school, simple uh, fork design. But the brilliant thing that Rally Raid's been able to do is retain the original uh, forks and yet get an additional two more inches of travel out of them for a total of seven, seven and a half inches by adding, by changing the internals. So we're going to get this new spring, which I believe is, it doesn't look like it, but I believe it's a progressive rate spring, much longer spring. It's going to replace the big plastic spacer that's in there with the stock spring. We're going to get this new, much longer dampening rod to help make up for the additional stroke. Of course, the dampening rod is where the oil flows through to give you uh, proper suspension, uh, rebound, and compression. You're going to get a new shim stack that's going to go inside of the dampener ro dampening rod to regulate that oil flow correctly. A new spacer and a adjustable preload cap, so you can torque that thing down and tighten up these springs and ad add additional preload to your front forks. Something you can't do with the uh, stock setup, except with maybe washers. But here you'll be able to adjust it from outside the bike. So we've added a larger diameter front wheel, a 19 inch front wheel. We've added two inches of front travel suspension. Now we need to make sure that all that clears the radiator and the front end of the bike under full compression. And that's where this Rally Raid triple tree comes into play. See the step down here? That pushes the top of the fork tubes down just about that much to get the additional room that you need to clear the bike in the event of full compression. And also that's going to help level the bike once you put the tall shock in the back and bring everything back up to level with an additional two inches of travel all the way around. This triple clamp is also going to require that we drill out the uh, ignition barrel and remount it onto here. And you also have adjustable fore and aft adjustability now on your handlebars which you didn't have with the stock bike. This bar riser also allows you to add a um, steering dampener if you're so inclined. Again, you need the right uh, bar riser for the right size handlebars. If you wanna run the stock smaller bars, you get this riser. If you wanna run fat bars, you get the riser for the fat bars, bigger diameter hole for the handlebars. Off of a, out of solid billet aluminum, this is milled from a four axis CNC milling machine as opposed to the cast alloy uh, stock unit. Really nice fit and finish. Anodized black. I only work in dark colors. One other feature of the triple tree is the Rally Raid makes a nice little uh, adapter plate to start mounting your electrical accessories and chargers and that sort of thing, GPS's and that sort of thing onto. And then finally, once we added the two inches of extra height on there, the stock kickstand is no longer going to work. So you're going to need to add this taller kickstand. The level two rally raid kit is basically everything you see here. It's the level three kit minus the wheels. So if you want to take and keep your uh, cast aluminum wheels and tires and tubeless tire capability, but yet have the additional suspension, you get the level two kit. The level one kit comes with a completely different rear shock and keeps the original height of the bike. It does not raise the bike. You only get additional, the, the good tractive rear shock to the original height of the bike. And you get new internals for the front forks that match the same height and travel as the stock bike. So you greatly improve the suspension without raising the bike on the level one kit. 
The level one kit tractive shock does, does not have the remote reservoir, though you can order a remote reservoir for the uh, level one kit stock length shock. Without the remote reservoir, you uh, lose some of the controllability of the shock. You no longer have the high speed and low speed uh, settings. Okay, now that we talked about what's in the kit, let's talk about items that are not in the kit uh, that you may want or need to adventurize your CB500X. Of course, you have to have the Rally Raid uh, engine guard. This allows you to do this, to raise the motorcycle, because we had to lo lose the center stand to make all this work. Start with this. I got the separate video on, on, on mounting that. Other Rally Raid components include these trick little uh, billet levers that are completely adjustable and that's fun to use on the trail. When you get in the technical first gear stuff, you can bring these way back and just get on one or two fingers on the clutch. Then when you're back out in traffic, you can push them back out there out of the way for long waits at a stoplight. The Rally Raid uh, tailpiece and hand guards here, or hand grips, uh, allows you to pick up the motorcycle uh, and allows you to strap on your giant loop luggage onto the back of the bike. Your Rally Raid spanners, because there is no, <laughs> there is nothing in the stock uh, trailside repair kit on the bike. These are just fantastic little inexpensive spanners for getting both wheels off the bike front and rear. Lightweight fits in your kit. From RNG Racing, another uh, company over in the UK, I did the Tail Tidy Kit. Pretty much just a cosmetic change. Something else I would consider essential is the RNG Radiator Guard. Just three bolts to get that on. On the handlebars, I added the uh, Bark Buster Storm Guards. And on the windscreen here, I added a MRA uh, spoiler. Great wind protection. You can ride around with nothing on your eyes and you won't get any of these guys in your eyes. One each rubber bat. Here's the other rally raid item. is a, a little uh, guard for the brake reservoir. One bolt attaches right there. And you definitely need to do something about your uh, foot pegs over the stock items. I've added the uh, pivot pegs using the pivot pegs designed for the uh, 650 v V-Strom with a little modification here. Rally Raid also makes some real nice wide platform foot pegs specifically for the CB500X. So what about the overall cost of this project? When we get done with this, I bought that used for 4,500 bucks. You can buy the 500X brand new for six to 7,000 bucks. By the time we get said and done with all this, we're still gonna be uh, under the budget for a brand new Suzuki V-Strom 650A adventure model. We'll go see how much one of those are at the local shop here. And you're gonna have a smaller, lighter, more agile, much more agile bike than the uh, 650. This is gonna fill the niche market that is so desperately needed here in the States. The bike that Honda should have built. And I bet you, mark my words, I bet in a couple of years, you'll start seeing these things produced stock from the factory. And if you've liked me and messed around with motorcycles all your life, you've tried modifying bikes over the years with various levels of success. <laughs> This is a well-engineered, well-thought-out design, and unless you own a 3D CAD, a 3D printer, a four-axis CNC milling machine, you couldn't do this on your own to this level of quality, and you certainly can't beat the price, I think, for what you're getting out of these components. It's been a lot of fun following the design of this thing online with the folks at Rally Raid and Jenny Morgan take these tires and wheels down to the Honda store and let them put these uh, the first set of tires onto these nice shiny new rims without scratching them up. Get them balanced up and get to work, get to cracking on this project, which will be a completely separate.